Welcome back to Scott Kaizen Sports. We're going to do a virtual PE lesson today and the main activities that we're going to be looking at are striking and throwing games and we're going to showcase that across six different sports. We're going to play cooperatively and we're going to play competitively which I'll talk about in a moment but whilst you're getting yourself ready all you'll need is your trusty scrunched up piece of paper if you're at school or if you're at home a rolled up sock will suffice. It's a bonus if you've got a drink with you as well, but it's not absolutely essential. You've got 60 seconds to get either a sock or a scrunched up ball. Off you go. If you're playing at home as well, by the way, it'd be awesome if you have a couple of shoes or something to mark out a goal. I'm just gonna mark out my goal there. If you're at home, you don't need to worry, uh, sorry, if you're at school, you don't need to worry about that so much. I'll just move it up so you can see a little bit better. There we go. Right, our first activity we're going to look at is Frisbee. And with Frisbee, all you're going to do if you're playing at home is take the ball and throw it like a Frisbee. We're doing a backhanded throw so that it hits the wall and comes back. If you're at school, we're going to do things slightly differently. We're going to play a cooperative game. So this means that you need a partner and you need to work together. And you're gonna take on two separate roles. The first person is going to be the target and it's their job to either stand ready to catch the ball or with their hands, they're going to make a very big hoop. And you can do this by pretending that you're hugging a tree and there we have a nice big hoop that your partner's going to throw the ball into. Of course, you can make the game more challenging by making the hoop a lot smaller, or you can make it easier by making the hoop even bigger than it was before. If you're the striker, you are going to start with the ball, and it's your job to work with your partner, not against them, to try and get the ball in the hoop as many times as you can. So the target is going to stand with the hoop, and the striker, all they're going to do is throw the ball like a frisbee so that it goes into the hoop. Every time you do that, you score yourself a point. If it's becoming too easy, target person, you make sure that you make that hoop a little bit smaller. We're going to play for 90 seconds so that you each get a turn. So don't worry at the moment, the hoop and the uh, striker will be swapping over. If you're at home, Create yourself a small goal. If the game's becoming too easy, make the goal a little bit smaller so that it tests your accuracy. 90 seconds, off you go. So during this game, we're gonna break it down into a few different aspects that will help your throwing. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the start position. If you're playing already, that's fine. The start position, you've got a choice. You can either stand facing the wall or your partner. You can stand sideways, or you can stand 45 degrees on, which is where you're half facing, half not facing. With your hands, it's gonna be like a bit like a pirate pulling their sword out. You're gonna start with your hand down here onto your opposite waist, and it's like you're pulling a sword out. We're gonna pull it from our hip, we're gonna stretch out our arm, and once we're pointing forwards, we're then going to let the ball go. And with the rest of our body, as always, we can throw in some extra power by adding more of a twisting motion. That one went a bit wild. So I can add a twisting motion, which will give me even more power. I'd like you to encourage you to think about as well the trajectory of the ball. So for example, if you throw the ball and it's a flat trajectory, which means it doesn't go up or down much, it kind of travels across, that's gonna be difficult for the the ball to drop into the hoop. So I'd like you to really think about doing a motion where the ball can go up and down in order to land in your partner's hoop. That's exactly 90 seconds, so we're going to swap over now. The person that was the hoop is now going to start with a ball and be the striker, and the person who was the striker is now going to stand as a hoop for their partner. 90 seconds, off you go, let's play again. Each time, make sure you practice using your left and your right hand. 
that allows us to become what we call ambidextrous. It means that we can use both sides of our body. It might be that you're playing a game of frisbee. Oops. And actually you've got the frisbee, it's impossible to throw with your right hand, there might be somebody blocking it, it might be that you need to use your left hand. So it's important that we become ambidextrous, it allows us to use both sides of our body, and allows us to deal with more opportunities that are thrown our way. Feel free as well when you're playing the game to mix it up. You might start in a bit more of a crouching position to try and get a little bit more height on the ball. You might step into it. You might try and catch with two hands. The ball might just come back and hit you and you might score a point that way. So there's various different ways that you can play this game. Last 10 seconds and then we'll move on to hockey. Last five seconds, see if you can get a few more throws in. And time's up. Well done, everybody. We can tick off at Frisbee. And next up, we've got hockey. So here's the starting position that I'd like you to get into. You're going to have one knee touching the floor and the other knee just up in front of you. It's almost like we're being knighted in front of the Royals. With the ball, you're going to place it down in front of you, roughly where your heel is of your leading foot, and you're going to use a scooping motion to lift the ball up against the wall oops, and bring it back to you. 90 seconds. Make sure that the person with the hoop is stood a little bit lower so it's much easier to scoop the ball and get it in. 90 seconds. Off you go. So with this activity, it's slightly different. It's kind of a half striking, half scooping motion. So you're going to start with your hand slightly further back than your waist. You're going to make sure that you're low enough so that when your hand swings, it reaches the underside of the sock or the ball. And when it does, we can then scoop it forwards. The better the scoop, the higher the sock will go. As always, we can add more power onto our shot. We talk about lateral movements because again, I'm swinging this way. I can then turn my body as well. And I might even start with my hand a little bit further back so I can throw a lot more power onto my shots. Make sure you practice with both your left and your right hand. We spoke a moment ago about being ambidextrous been able to use both hands to deal with the situation. And if you're playing with your partner, make sure that you're doing your bit as well by keeping the hoop nice and still, making it bigger if they're struggling, or if your partner's trying to kind of, if your partner's very, very good and experienced at this game, then you can make the hoop a lot smaller for your partner to try and flick the ball into. And swap over. If you were the striker, you now become the target. If you were the target, you now become the striker. 90 seconds, off we go. <clears throat> a lot of this will be trial and error. We've learned the basics in other weeks. Throwing, catching. We've looked at some other striking games as well. And they'll be able to transfer across to the games that we're doing right now. Make sure that we practice some of these moves. We've done similar ones before. Some of these moves are a little bit more novelty. And all we mean by a novelty movement is it's a lot more creative and it's something that we haven't done as often before. It's a little bit more unexpected. Last 20 seconds. Again, remember you're trying to get the ball into your partner's hoop. You're not playing against them at this point. The phase where you're playing against each other is going to come once we've run through all the activities. The aim of the game is to try and build up our skills first. 
once we've got a good base level of skill, then we can start putting it into games where we've got to think about angles, distances, perception, uh, deception, trying to trick our partner. And of course, we're trying to work out all these calculations and plans and strategies in real time. It's very, very difficult, which is why it's important that we get the skill part right, done right first. And hold it there, everybody. Well done. That's hockey done. The next one we're going to do is one of my favourites, which is handball. So again, we're going to have one person starting as the target. The person who's playing handball, you've got a choice. You can either use an overarm throw to get the ball in the hoop, and we looked at overarm throws the other week. You can use an underarm throw, which we also looked at, starting with the ball slightly behind your waist, and then figuring out which time you need to open your hand in order to get the ball to loop in the hoop. Or the third option is you can do what's similar to the tennis serve that we did the other week, where you're going to serve the ball up, and with your hand, you're going to push the ball into the hoop. Make a decision, 90 seconds, off we go. So with each of these throws, they do look slightly different. With the overarm throw, we're using one hand to points. We're using the other hand to hold the ball slightly behind our ear. And then we're going to adopt a 45 degree stance. Then our hands are just going to swap positions. This hand here is going to come back as this hand juts forward, which means our throw will look a little something like that. Now, if you're playing against your partner, your throw might have to kind of loop up a little bit more so that it goes down into the hoop. The underarm throw. This one, you can stand facing the target directly. You're going to start with the ball slightly behind your waist, slightly behind where your bum is. And all you're going to do is move it forwards, rocking it like an elephant rocks their trunk. And at some point, you need to let go of the ball. If we let go of it too soon, it just smashes into the floor. And if we let go of it too late, it just goes up and then comes back down again. So we need to try and let go of the ball at the right time so it goes to our partner. And with the tennis serve, that's even more difficult. Much like in the overarm throw, we're going to have this ball moving up. And when it does, then we swap our arms. We move it up and then we swap to try and hit it into our partner's hoop. 90 seconds is up, swap over. If you were the target, you now become the striker. If you were the striker, you now become the target. 90 seconds, off we go. Hopefully at this point, if you're playing at home, you're getting in absolutely loads of practice. If you are finding it too easy at home, you can either play against your parents, you might have a sibling, a brother or a sister to play against. It might be that you make the goal a little bit smaller, which is going to be a lot more challenging. You might even challenge yourself further by taking a step away. So now when we're scoring in the goal, that one hit the post, that one hit the post, that one hit the post, <laughs> that one was in. It's going to be a lot harder when we go further away. So we're really testing our accuracy now. Last 20 seconds, and then we'll have a quick break because I know the game is tiring and we can get pretty warm. If you can catch it, by the way, that's great because it just means that you get an extra go. Or rather, you can have your goes more quickly. If you don't catch it and the ball hits the floor, there's nothing really to worry about. We're not working on the catching side of things at the moment. We're just working on the throwing and the striking. So as long as the ball comes back somewhere near you, that's good enough. We count that as success. One more throw, see if you can try and get it in your partner's hoop. Again, you can increase the distance if you want to. And full time. Good stuff. Really well worked, everybody. Go and grab yourself a drink. If you've got any balls that are littered amongst the playing area across the classroom floor at home, make sure you go and pick them up and get ready because we're going to again move on to boxing. Boxing is something I know that you all really enjoyed last time, so we're going to add into that with our competitive game. We're going to try and make it more accurate than we did in the other week. So, get yourself ready. I 
I keep losing them. Last 10 seconds to get yourself ready and we'll make a start. I think we're running well on time at the moment. By the way, teachers, we're going to make sure that we do finish five or six minutes early. I know it's kind of complicated sometimes when we're trying to do that transition. So we'll make sure that we factor time in for that as well. <clears throat> so we've done our handball. We can tick that one off. <clears throat> Next up, we're going to fly through our boxing. So as we said last week, with our boxing, you've got one of two choices. Choice one, we're going to stand 45 degrees on. And you can either use your front hand to do a jab. Starting close to where your shoulder is, and all you're going to do is extend and move forwards in a jabbing action. So throw and jab. With your back hand, again, it's going to be similar kind of motion, punching forwards. Make a decision, 90 seconds, one person is a hoop, one person striking, off you go. So that's the technique for the jab. Ball thrown up in front of you, and then jabbing with the same hand. Oops. Or the second option is to throw with the ball coming slightly behind you. If we throw up and it comes back down, then we're having to lean too much. So it's just going to come back close to the centre of our body. And when we do that, hopefully we can punch as well. This is the importance of trying the other skills that we did last week with the throwing and the catching. If we can't throw and catch effectively, then it makes it very difficult for us to serve. Oops. So again, you've got a choice. You can either use a jab or what we call a straight. And remember, the aim isn't to punch your partner. That's not what we're working on. The aim of the game is to try and hit the ball or push the ball or punch the ball, strike the ball so that it goes into your partner's hoop. Again, if you're finding the game very easy, it might be that your partner takes a step back to make it a little bit more challenging. And you might even swap. So here, I'm jabbing with my left instead of my right. Or I might even do a straight with my right. Again, throwing with my left. And swap over. If you were the server, you now become the striker. Sorry, if you were the target, you now become the striker. And if you were the striker, you now become the target. Another 90 seconds, off we go. Good skills that we're building up here. Sometimes we'll succeed like that. Sometimes it'll be a failure like that one. It doesn't matter. It's all to do with learning. Every time your brain learns something and it works well, your brain learns what to do. Every time something goes wrong, then your brain learns because it figures out what not to do and it changes it slightly for next time. The only difference is our emotion that gets attached to the success and the failure. When we succeed, we learn and we tend to feel quite good about ourselves. If we fail, we tend to feel a little bit down in the dumps, but we've still learned something. So actually, if you can learn to control your emotions and be resilient and be determined and persevere, in the face of adversity, when things are going wrong and you keep going, if you've got that determination, then your brain is just going to keep learning and learning and learning and learning. Everybody fails. It's how you deal with that failure that is the most important thing. And time's up. That is boxing done as well. We've flown through that one. Next one we're going to look at is basketball. And you've got, again, a couple of choices for this one. The first thing you can do is the chest pass, where you're going to hold the ball between your two fingers, fingers facing towards you, like that. And all you're going to do is push the ball towards your partner's hoop. The second option, I'm just going to bob down to make this a little bit easier to see, is I'm going to start almost like the shot put position that we did the other week. The only difference is this time, 
I'm just going to have the ball slightly in front of me. And all I'm going to do is straighten my arm and flick my wrist. So that the ball goes up and down, hopefully in your partner's hoop. 90 seconds, off you go. So I'll show you again for those people that are ready. You can either be playing or you can watch again the tutorial. So both balls on the hands, your fingers are going to be facing towards you and all you're going to do is push out the ball in that kind of motion. We're going to do that against the wall and then hopefully try and catch it. Second option, again, similar to the shot put with the ball behind our ear, all we're going to do is stand 45 degrees on is good enough and we're just going to push the ball up and then we're going to flick our wrist as well so that our throw goes up and down. If you're playing at home, you will need to put a little bit more power on it because you're aiming to get it to the wall and for it to come back again. This is where our catching skills come in. We're not working on catching, Oops. but the better we catch, the more opportunity we've got to practice because we can fit more goes in. Last 10 seconds and we'll swap over. Again, you can pick whichever move you want. And change over. If you were the target, you now become the striker. If you were the striker, you now become the target. Off you go. Some of you will have pointed out that, yeah, we can use these skills in netball. And you're right, we certainly can. We can actually use this throw in dodgeball. Certainly can. We can actually use a lot of these moves in a variety of different sports. So for example, when we look at the frisbee throw, it could be that you're doing some play acting with swords or maybe even some fencing. It could be a table tennis or a tennis backhand, a badminton backhand. The motions are actually pretty similar. So a lot of the time we're doing these sports, you'll notice that even though we're doing a skill from one sport, we can actually use that across a range of different sports. When we talk about throwing and catching, striking the ball, well, that could be relevant to a whole host of different things. When we look at striking the ball, that could be us doing the rugby drop kick. That could be us playing golf and striking the ball. There's a whole host of different things. It might even look a little bit like water polo. And the more we practice one sport, activity, skill, the more we'll then be able to use it in other things. Think about it this way. If you get really good with numbers, well, you'll know how to times, you'll know how to divide, you'll know how to subtract, you'll know how to add. And if you were to go into a job that involved lots of numbers, well, you already know how to do a lot of these things. Even later on, when you learn things like algebra, trigonometry, calculus, all very, very difficult things at secondary school, because you already understand numbers at primary school, you can transfer some of those skills. And it's the same here. A lot of these skills we can transfer, not into trigonometry, but we can transfer it into other sports. Time's up. We'll tick off basketball and our final one, it's a repeat of last time, a good chance to consolidate our learning. We're going to do football. So, same again. Your partner's going to give you a hoop. They might hold the hoop like this. They might hold the hoop like that. It's entirely up to them. And the striker, all they're going to do is drop the ball and then hopefully try and kick it in the goal. Again, if you're playing from home, sort your goal out. For me, I'm going to make my goal a little bit bigger. Just know that kicking the ball is quite tricky. 90 seconds. Off we go. So we can make this game slightly easier by dropping the ball. And all we're going to do is start with one foot in front of the other. For me, I'm right footed. So I'm going to start with my right foot just behind my left. All I'm going to do with the ball in my right hand is drop it on the floor. And when I drop it, I'm just going to bring my foot forward in a swinging motion. It's a little bit like we did in hockey or cricket the other week where we have that swinging motion. I'm just going to swing the foot so that it hits the ball. It might help a little bit more if you're doing the kicking action, you point your toes down as well. 
If we have our feet like that, it does tend to push the ball up. Having your feet straight like that, much like we do in gymnastics, helps to push the ball further forwards. As always, trial and error, you might want the ball to go up a little bit because ultimately you've got to get it up and into your partner's hoop. As always, we make sure that we play nice and safely because a lot of you are playing in the classroom. Just going to have to do some my right foot because my cable's getting in the way. That suits me, I'm right footed. Once we've finished doing this round, we're going to have a quick break and then we're going to play our competitive one versus one games where we're going to be playing against each other. Before we can do that though, we need to spend a bit of time practicing, crafting and honing our skills so that we can take part in the game effectively. That said, swap over. If you were the hoop, you now become the striker. If you were the striker, you now become the hoop. 90 more seconds, off you go. As we spoke about before, you can add more power into your shots. All that's going to happen is I'm going to do a bigger kicking motion and I might even twist my body a little bit. So when I do kick, I've got a twisting motion. If you look at this side of the hip, as it comes through, it goes from there to there. So I am twisting my body slightly, which adds a little bit more power onto the shots. This is probably the most difficult one, which is why we've saved it for last. If you're a parent or a teacher involved in this, you'll appreciate just how difficult it is. So well done for you kids that are giving it a go. Again, hopefully there'll be a lot of failure, which sounds like a bizarre thing to say. But if there's lots of failing, that means that lots of learning is going on. If you kick the ball and can catch it 100% of the time, perfectly, all that tells me is that the challenge is a little bit too easy. So we might have to decrease the size of the goal or increase our D away from the goal. We want to be in a situation where we keep challenging ourselves. I was reading an article not so long back and it was talking about the optimum range of success is somewhere in between 50 and 80 percent. Or put another way, about two thirds. So if you were to do something three times, you'd want to be successful for two of them. If you're successful for all three times you try something, it's probably too easy. And if you're unsuccessful and only manage to do it once or no times, then it's probably too hard. So you can use that as a quick idea about whether you want to make the game easier or harder. Have three goes and see how you get on. That said, let's have a quick drink. You've all been working really hard. And when we start playing again, make sure that you stick with the same partner because we're going to be playing a one versus one competitive game. And what we mean by that is you're going to be playing against each other. And as before, I'll give you two different options so that you can decide because it's your lesson, you know what you're capable of. I'm just at home giving you some ideas. Now's a great time to connect any balls that you've lost. Last 30 seconds, cross all these ticks off again. <clears throat> right then, the Frisbee game, you now have a choice of two different ways to play this game. You're going to have the striker and they've got a very similar job. So if you're the hoop, you can still carry on serving as a hoop if you want to play cooperatively because I know that some of you are good friends. If you want to play against each other, you have option one, whereby you're going to mark out a couple of objects in the classroom. It could be two pencils on the floor. It could be something else as long as you can do it safely. And each of those items are going to act as the posts. So the job of the hoop now is to become the goalkeeper. They've got to move around and try and stop the ball from going into the goal. As always, I know that some of the classrooms can be quite busy, so make sure that you're in a safe space where you can do it. If you can't, then you can play option B, 
Whereas the person who was the hoop before, or the goalkeeper, is now just going to stand. The person with the ball is going to try and then hit them. So they're going to try and throw the ball at them. They're going to try and strike them. The person's job now is to actually try and move out of the way of the person that's throwing the ball. For here, you don't need to dive yourself around. All you're going to do is stand with your feet shoulder width apart, and you can only dodge with your feet on the floor. Obviously, the person that's throwing it can only throw at the top half of the body. So you've got three options there. You can either work together and carry on using the hoop. Option two, the person that's using the hoop can now create a goal and act as the goalkeeper. Or option three, you can find another space, spread both your feet apart, and the person who's doing the striking now is trying to throw the ball at you, and you have to dodge and try and move out of the way. In each round, the striker's got 90 seconds to try and get as many points as possible. If you're playing at home, we've got another fantastic opportunity to do the same skills and build our repertoire even further. In fact, you might even see how many you get in a row, and that could be your score. 90 seconds. Off we go, we're back on Frisbee. So if you think about the Frisbee one we talked about, it's a little bit like a pirate drawing a sword. We might stand 45 degrees on. You might face the wall, that works as well. You might stand sideways with your shoulder facing the wall. And as always, when you got the opportunity, we practice with both hands. If you're playing in the classroom, it is a competitive game, so you are playing against each other now. With that in mind, let's make sure that we're playing nice and safely. If we get injured and hurt, it means we're not going to be able to practice the skills and we're not going to get any better. It might also mean that we get a long-term injury, which hurts a lot, which is something we want to try and avoid. We want to make sure we all stay fit, healthy and active. 30 seconds left for those scorers those strikers, those people trying to get it past the goalkeeper, to hit the goalkeeper, or in the hoop. Last 20 seconds, we're going to absolutely fly through this second half of the lesson. Again, if you're playing at home and you want to share your score with other people, you can do. If you want to keep it as your own personal score, that's fine as well. Swap over the person who was the hoop. Or the strike, uh, the goalkeeper is now going to swap over. Off we go. So again, we're trying to score in the goal now. Something I'd like to think about when you are trying to score is think about how you can trick the goalkeeper. It might be that you do a fake shot and then a real shot. You might think about sometimes doing it a little bit higher. Sometimes you might do it a little bit lower. And again, you might try and trick them when you do it. You might think about the angle that you're going to go for as well. Are you gonna to go to the middle? Are you gonna to go to the left? Are you gonna to go to the right? Are you gonna do it so actually it goes under the keeper's legs? Are you gonna do it where it goes in between the gap of their arm and their body? All these things you need to think about when you are the striker. Once we've practiced the basic skill, we can then start to move on to those kind of things. Angles, distances, speed, power, and a bit of deception. Can we try and trick our partner so that we can score? Think about the success criteria that we talked about as well. If you're really good at the game and you're scoring lots and actually you're getting a very, very big score, take a step back and make it more challenging or shorten the goal. And again, if you're finding it too hard or you're playing against a super keeper, then make sure that you make the goal bigger or take a step forward. 90 seconds is up. Change over, off we go. Again, we're trying to frisbee the ball into the goal. Of course, if you're in the hall or even better yet outside, although it is snowing in Leeds, this might be a game that you can play in the summer where you've got a frisbee and again, you've got to try and get it past your opposition. You can get those soft, flexible frisbees now. So if they do bump into your hand or your finger or your body, then actually it doesn't hurt. The old plastic frisbees still do, so I'd be very careful if you're going to use them. 
last 30 seconds. Again, if it's too easy, make the challenge more difficult. And again, we can focus on the basics. We might have to slow things down and really think about my starting position. I might think about where my hand's gonna go and I might really think about twisting my body to get a lot of extra power. I know sometimes when we play a competitive game, sometimes we can be in the mood to rush things. We need to make sure that we get our technique right as well. Last 10 seconds, practice on both hands. You might even create a game whereby if you score with your less dominant hand, that's worth three points compared to your dominant hand, which might just be worth one. Again, it's up to you. This is just a series of ideas that hopefully you can use. You might even change the point scoring system for the next game. Hockey, 90 seconds, switch over, remember. Off we go. So again, with hockey, we're gonna go down. The ball's going to be roughly where our heel is, and all we're trying to do now is scoop it into the goal past our partner. Or you might be trying to hit your partner, it's up to you which game you play. You might even be still trying to get it in the hoop. Now obviously I am aware that this is not hockey. We don't have the hockey stick for example. But we wanted a series of games that you can play safely inside the classroom. And having hockey sticks inside the classroom may not be the best idea that anyone's ever come up with. It's quite a small space and we want to make sure that people don't get hit. However, we are replicating somewhat of a hockey hit. Hockey in is more of a pushing action. This one we're just going to use as a scoop just so that we can catch the ball and go again. You might argue it's probably more similar to a golfing position. And you might be right. Again, all these skills, they're interconnected and they're transferable as well. We can try them in one sport and we can try them in others as well. Last five seconds and we'll swap over. Can you try and score ahead of your partner? Three, two, one. And swap over. If you're the goalkeeper, we now become the striker. If you're the striker, you are now the goalkeeper. 90 seconds. Off we go. I'm going to make sure that I practice on my other hand as well. A lot of what's happening in your brain at the moment, which we spoke about last time, is neural plasticity. I'm speaking about the same topics over and over again, by the way. I do know that I'm doing it. I am aware of it. It's so that we really drill in the message of the key points of what we're doing. You can't just do something once and expect to learn it. That's not really how the brain works. You don't do your seven times table in class one day and then never do it again, but can always be able to do it. That's not what happens. Again, you don't just look at one word and think, right, I spelt it right once. I know how to do it every time. You know, that's, that's not what happens. You can't just look at a word once, spell it right once, and then remember it forever. It's not how the brain works. So sometimes we need to talk about the same things over and over again. We need to practice things over and over again till eventually we get them right. And a lot of what we're doing is beneficial to your brain in terms of neuroplasticity, which is the phenomenon of when your brain changes, depending upon the stuff you're giving it to do. Last 10 seconds. We can take off frisbee, take off hockey. And time's up, we are on handball next. We know how it looks. You can either be in the goal, you can get the ball to try and hit you, or you can be the hoop. And all you're going to do is the overhand or underhand throw. Of course, the tennis one you can do as well. Off you go, 90 seconds. Yeah, so your brain's going through neuroplasticity right now. Every time we practice, things are changing slightly. Your brain's making new connections. And it means that you're learning something. There'll have been a time when you couldn't swim. There'll have been a time when you couldn't tie your laces. And there still might be a time when you can't play the drums doo -doo -doo, tss, brilliantly. That will happen. But the more you practice it, the more your brain changes, and that helps us to learn. 
if you look at a footballer's brain, that'll be totally different to a violin player's brain, which will be totally different to a writer like J.K. Rowling. Her brain will be totally different to an aircraft pilot. A scientist's brain will be totally different to a YouTuber's brain. And that's because of the skills that they've practiced across time. Scientists might be really good at doing experiments, critical thinking, hypothesis, i.e. guessing what's going to happen because they've done it lots of times before. So their brain gets really good at doing those things. Again, someone that's a YouTuber will have been practicing it. Swap over. Will have been practicing being a YouTuber for a long time. So they'll be very good at lighting, editing, sound. They may be more creative coming up with different ideas. So there's a whole host of different things that will change your brain. And hopefully these activities will be not only good in sport, they'll be good in games that you play in the playground with your friends. It might be handy if you're part of a club on a weekend. And even if it's not any of those, it'll just help you in day-to-day -day life. Being able to balance, being able to coordinate. And of course, it helps us to stay very healthy and very active, which is very important at the moment, because obviously we've got certain things going on at the moment and some people are getting ill, so it's really important now to stay very, very healthy. Your health is very important. Oops. So we make sure that we eat lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of beans, lots of nuts, lots of seeds, lots of legumes. We make sure that we exercise a lot and of course, sleep. Sleep is so, so important. In fact, when you sleep, that's when your brain actually learns. I mean, we do stuff during the day, but it's when we go to sleep that your brain actually organises everything. It's a little bit like note-taking. I'll get back to that in a moment. And time is up. We've done handball. We're not going to have a one minute break. We're going to get straight into boxing because we've still got three activities to get through and I want to make sure that you guys don't miss any of it. So with the boxing, you can either punch the ball into the goal, you can punch the ball so that it hits your partner, or you can try and punch the ball so that it goes into the hoop. 90 seconds, off you go. So we're talking about how your brain kind of make notes and that's, that's kind of quite true. So think about it this way. When you're working during the day, your brain's learning lots of new things. So it's like it's writing down notes. It's trying to remember everything. And at the end of the day, once it's learned all these notes, it might be a little bit like my bedroom. Stuff absolutely everywhere. And if someone was to ask me about a piece of information, I know it's here somewhere, but it's, I've, I've got stuff all over the place. Well, when you sleep, that's when your brain gets to work. When you sleep, your brain actually organizes all of the new information that you've learned. It's kind of like putting notes, rewriting them and putting them neatly in a folder. So that when you wake up in the morning, your brain will have actually consolidated. All it means by that is it's kind of cemented some of the learning. It's made it stick, it's made it stay, which is pretty cool. And a lot of you will notice this kind of thing sometimes when you'll go to bed and you'll be thinking about a problem. It might be someone that you've had a falling out with. It might be that there's a problem in, you know, kind of maths, English, science, art, drama, music that you're trying to solve. Or it might be you've been playing a game at a certain level that you can't do. And you go to bed thinking about that kind of thing. Well, swap over, by the way. If you're a striker, you now become the goalie. Goal becomes the striker. Well, when you go to sleep, again, your brain starts processing it. It's using all that information, even though you're asleep, it's still thinking and still learning. So that might be sometimes when you wake up in the morning and you think, oh, I know what to do now. Or maybe you're not quite as worried about it. And that's because your brain's had plenty of time to think about it. And it now knows what to do. So that's why sleep is incredibly important. Not only that, it's good for your skin, it's good for your brains, it's good for your muscles, it's when you grow most in your sleep. It helps flush out all the bad things in your body. 
So I can't think what it is now, but there's a process in your body that happens when it gets rid of various waste products. But that process only happens when you're asleep, which goes to show just how important sleep is. And think about it this way, kids. If you haven't slept the night before and you feel really groggy at school, how much learning are we going to do? Probably not that much, which is why we stay active. It's why we drink lots of water and eat healthy food. And of course, you must, must sleep. It's really important. I think sometimes when you're younger, it's quite cool to stay up late. But it's far more important to get some sleep done. And time is up. We're going to change over now. We're going to move on to basketball. You know how this looks with basketball. You can either do the chest pass, getting the ball into your partner, or you can do the three-pointer. We're trying to get the ball to go up and land back in the hoop. 90 seconds, off you go. Again, if you're at home, you're aiming to hit the ball on the wall so that it comes back to you. You might have one particular point in the wall that you're trying to hit over and over again. You might change the size of the goals. It's up to you. Either way, make sure that you practice with both hands so that we're getting better and better and better. After this, we've only got one activity left, which is football. We've absolutely flown through this. We've all done very, very well indeed. Hopefully there'll be a few warm faces, a few people sweating. We've talked about why sweating is important. Your body isn't a radiator. You can't just hit the off switch or turn your body down to the temperature that you want. That's not how it works. Instead, your body uses a system called sweating. And sweating is when warm water comes out of your body, which helps to cool you down. The downside is, if lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of water is coming out of your body, that water needs to be replaced. And if it doesn't get replaced, we call that dehydration. Think of your body like a massive bucket full of water. If all the water comes out, then the bucket's empty and we can't have that. We need to make sure that we put some new water in and we can do that by having a drink after we've done these activities. 90 seconds is up, change over. If you're the keeper, you now become the, uh, the striker. If you're the striker, you now become the keeper. Off you go. I know I'm just kneeling down during this one, but you can still use the chest pass if you want. Oops. I'm gonna keep practicing with my left, I think. Yeah, it's very, very important that we drink lots. We don't have to drink so much that water's coming out of our ears, but we certainly need to make sure that we have a few swigs of water after we've done some physical activity. I don't know about you, but when I first started, this room was freezing cold. I was actually wearing a jacket inside my room. It was that cold. But at the moment, I'm starting to get really warm, which is why I've got my big jug of water with me. Wow. 30 seconds left and then we'll move on to our final one of football and I'll keep my promise to the teachers that we will finish a few minutes early to make sure that we've got time to grab a drink. Make sure we've got time to kind of put the classroom back together. I'm aware that chairs and tables may have been moved back to the side and also just a few minutes to calm down and just get back into a working frame of mind. Last 10 seconds. See if you can score twice more. That's once. Not long left. And time's up, we'll tick that off and we'll move on to our final activity of the day. Again, the keeper can either have a hoop, they can either actually be the goalkeeper or they can try and dodge any of the shots that are coming in. 90 seconds. Off you go. Oops, what's going on here? There we go. Again, if you're at home, see how many kicks and catches you can get in a row. You don't even necessarily have to catch it. It might just be if the ball comes back pretty close to you, that counts as a point. It's up to you. Your ability is different to me. My ability is different to Olivia's. 
Olivia's ability is different to Jack's. Jack's is different to Finley. And Finley is very different to Laura and Lauren. That's a good thing. We're all different. We all try and get better, but we're all very different. We all have different strengths. And we usually have those strengths because we've practiced them more. Unfortunately, there isn't enough time in the day to be absolutely good in everything and practice everything forever. There isn't enough time. When they say you can be anything you want when you grow up. Sorry, when they say that you can be everything you want when you grow up. There's some truth in that. But to be everything that you want, there's probably not enough time. So I can't be a Formula One driver and a pilot and a professional footballer and a fireman and a carpenter and an artist and a DJ and a YouTuber. I can't do all that to a very, 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 very good standard because there isn't enough time. But you can be anything. Pick half a dozen things that you're really good at and keep practicing those. And some of you will do that already. Swap over, because some of you will join clubs on the weekend. It might be a gymnastics club, it might be football, it might be rugby, it might be archery. On the weekend you might enjoy learning about different things. It might be gaming that's your thing. You might learn about submarines. It's entirely up to you. But with your free time it's very important to start practicing things. Work as hard as you can in school. And then when the weekend comes around, try and learn some extra things as well. Something that you're interested in. Something you enjoy. And that helps your brain to change and get even better than you already are. Again, we can't be everything. There's not enough time. But we certainly can be anything you want to be. Doctor, lawyer, vet, footballer, YouTube, actor, actress. Just means that you have to work very hard with the time that you've got. Last 30 seconds of the session. Whew. Getting very warm. I'm going to grab a shower after this. Ooh, nearly. Right, last three shots. That's all we've got time for. Can you score past your partner or can you try and hit your partner? With the ball, obviously. Last one then, last shot of the day. Time is up everybody, really well worked. I know that we've looked at a lot of different activities there. So really well done everyone for giving it a go. We've talked about transfer of learning, we've talked about neuroplasticity, we've talked about the importance of sleep, and we've also talked about how your brain changes when you try out new activities. You've all been absolutely fantastic, really well done if you're at school, really well done if you're at home as well, because I know sometimes there isn't much space available. So thank you for tuning in and giving it a go. Coming up to half term, so have a great half term everybody. Stay healthy, stay active, stay safe, and I will see you all next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.